Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi. How are you? Hi, Tyler. Oh, I'm Lance. Great. great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Jamie. Oh, oh, so nice oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, we totally recognize you. Yeah. That's a good Come sign. On. I'm Lance Bass, and Tyler might recognize me from my teenage years with NSYNC. <laughs> yeah, the bye 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 people. Yeah, that's, that's me. <laughs> this is Jamie Lynn Sigler, my bestie of besties. And I can pretty much guarantee that Tyler does not know who I am because if he would know me from Sopranos, that he was like five when the show was on. So I'm probably a brand new face to him, and that's great. That's a okay. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for having me today. Oh gosh, thanks for being here. Yes, I'm really excited to see what comes through, and like us too. Are you yes. kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I was really interested in doing it with Jamie Lynn because I mean we are best friends, and I just want to be there to support her and whatever is going to happen. And I just think it's going to be just such a you know, cool experience to do it yeah. with someone else and see what's all flying around. Yeah. I already have a lot coming through for you specifically, um, and we'll get there, but okay. uh, you're definitely a, a pole. The possibility of talking to somebody that I thought I would never speak to again um, is amazing, but also just, you know, just makes me a little anxious. Mm -hmm. So to have like one of my biggest like support systems in the world here with me means a lot. And so I feel like to have a hand to hold is, is really um, special and makes it a lot easier for me. Have either of you seen a medium before? Yeah, I mean, we have. In fact, together, we've, we've been to like seances, that type of stuff, wow. but, uh, and, and I had a talk show that I would always bring in, you know, psychics and mediums wow. in, but none that ever hit anything. Right. So uh, I'm real interested in this. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, well, I like to hear that, because, you know, everyone has different experiences, mm -hmm. and for me, I really value validation. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, sometimes objects do help my process. Um, I'm not even gonna hold on to them quite yet. I'm just gonna kind of go down the list and then I'll just see if we have any and then okay. we'll go from there. Interesting. So I need you and you. Got you and you. Oh, cool. They're cooperating. That's nice. That's always a good sign. <laughs> All right. So your mom's side. Um, do you know any weird connections to Florida by chance? My husband's from Florida. Oh, His whole cool. family still lives there. Awesome. Are we Miami or Orlando? Uh, Miami, actually. Just funny <laughs> oh, enough. Miami, yeah. That's my husband's side. Awesome. Adopting, adopting. Okay, so the message that's coming through here is for whatever reason, I'm connecting on that side of family, there's some deceased loved ones that are kind of coming through collectively to deliver a message. The feeling that's coming across is a reference to children, 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 adoption, 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 babies, 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 or like bringing a baby on and having a child. And I like it, but it comes through more so in like a congratulatory sense in the way that this is, you know, uh, popping through. So the Florida family even comes through for you. Yeah. Supportively, so it's yeah. kind of an interesting thing. No, I'm very close with the in-laws, and <clears throat> we're going to start a family this year. We've awesome. Just started talking about it. That's exciting. I, I love that. Uh, you know, he sees my family starting. Obviously, my close friends know exactly what's in my mind and what I'm thinking personally. For him to validate that for me um, was incredible. It's so interesting because my initial feeling when I got here, just like from the second you opened the door, was I felt like I was really supposed to talk to you. Um, and it was interesting because as I got here, there was this feeling of like a lack of resolve. And there was this energy that was really trying to come through. And this was basically an individual who acknowledged passing away too soon from their end. And the feeling was like, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, and I'm gonna come through. Um, the individual who would have passed away basically didn't acknowledge dying as a child. It wasn't that kind of thing. This person got to live like a relatively decent duration of life, but their life was cut short before they got to live the full of their life. And this individual was really, really like pressing on me, but it felt more so like it would apply right when they're opened for you, not really you so much. So does that make sense to what you know? Yes, it okay. makes sense. Awesome. But it's a very specific kind of high energy. Yeah. <laughs> kind of a feeling where I feel like I'm trying to come down from this person and they're like lifting me up. But this person is why I'm here today for some reason. Are there any objects for this person that you've brought today or? Oh, perfect. Awesome. I will hold on to that. So we'll see what comes through. Um, there is a reference to sister, sister, sister. I'm a sister. You would be a sister. <laughs> Oops. Thank you. Like, sister, 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 sister. <laughs> and he's coming across so funny. This individual would be somebody who would always make people laugh, would always basically be like, the feeling is like center of attention, or I don't know what this is, but the feeling is, I want to make you laugh. I want you to be happy. I, I wish you could just plug a cord in and see all of what's going to be because it comes across as such a funny way. I feel like way. we know. Oh, we can see it. Yes. <laughs> no doubt. We know. Lance has spent a lot of time with him. I was always the life of the party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He liked to make people laugh. <laughs> he liked to just be inappropriate and make people uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. 
hiking the pants up, and I feel like I'm dancing and hiking the pants up. And this is the weirdest thing because it's a funny memory that's coming across. Well, this individual was young, like young child. There might even be a photo where like the, the pants are hiked up. Well, we made a ton of home movies. My brother Adam, when he was young, wanted to be a director, so he would. It's probably how I got into acting. Like would force my other brother and I to be in his films. Right. And so we would do movies. We would, and we would do music videos. And in one of the music videos, he dressed like a dork. Right. Which was where his pants were really high up and he's had glasses, but it's all on video. And we watch them a lot as a family because even when Adam was alive, you know, because they just make us laugh and we love that we still have them all. I knew Adam was gonna come in immediately. I mean, he's chomping at the bit to yeah. talk to you as much as he can. Um, it's just really nice to see. I felt like he was there with us, yeah. you know, just seeing Adam. It makes us laugh because we know who he's talking about, you know, so to really feel like he got the essence of who my brother is was so confirming and so mm. it was special like right off the bat it was awesome and the feeling is like even up until the end this individual still was trying to maintain this kind of like i'm gonna make you laugh i'm gonna do this and this is coming through in a bit of an interesting way because there's a feeling of like oh i'm living life and i feel like i'm fine and everything's good and then i just pass away and there's a reference to like a relatively um sudden feeling with this the reference that's coming through is I'm having to talk about the time after passing. Um, there's this very specific acknowledgement of not wanting to be seen. Now, I have to be specific in the way this is coming through because this individual is talking about what is done after they pass away. Well, he um, had uh, a brain injury aneurysm seized and fell and hit his head and was found in a very compromising position. I made the decision to have it be closed casket and no one right. see him because I just didn't feel like he would want anybody to see him like that. And that makes me, I definitely would agree because the feeling that comes across is in essence like an appreciation because there's an acknowledgement of like not being seen, not being seen and the feeling of like a rush memorial. There's a comfort um, in this because from this individual's perspective, their whole life defined their life. They didn't want to be seen in that last moment and have people remember that. Yeah. Do you know of the phone call that he had made the day prior when it came to family. Yeah. And there's a feeling of, ooh, and there's a feeling of planning. I feel like I'm excited. This is so weird. And there's a feeling of, oh my God, this is so exciting. I can't wait. I'll call it like the feeling of, I'm gonna talk to you again. Like, we'll talk about this in depth because this is about to happen, but it's exciting. And then he dies. Well, he was texting me, he texted me to see if I um, could pick him up from the train station. Right. And I never answered him. Right. And like I had like such guilt about it because I just felt like, yeah. I don't know, I just could have communicated with him before and like said I love you or something. But he knew you loved him. He really did. I really believe that and he knows that. The way it comes through is no one could have seen when he was going to pass. Yeah. But he didn't want that phone conversation to be the thing that defines your memory of what you could have said differently. Sure. And he's around you. Um... Did he hear us um, when he was in the hospital? Let's look. Let's see. So he is having me bring up um, actually being unconscious before he transitioned, and that he knew that his hand was being held, and he acknowledges that he knew that he was told that it was okay for him to let go. And there's an appreciation behind this, because there's a feeling of knowing that now that this is done, I can transition, I can be let go. We held his hand, he was, hand was not, not held <laughs> right. the whole time he was in the hospital, and um, we stood around him as a family when he was passing, and um, we told him it was okay to go. Yeah, that was important for yeah. him. Because for what he went through, it's interesting, he acknowledges the severity of what he went through. Yeah. And the feeling is like, this is so severe that I shouldn't have even physically lasted beyond when this initially happened, but I was holding on for my family. And that comes through well, and he acknowledges he to too, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, please know he knew what was said and, and he's at peace. So. I'm glad. It's big. <laughs> No one knows except my husband, because I didn't tell anyone that I was like so upset that I didn't text him back. It was like a text I read and I thought I'd get to it later. And the next morning he was gone. And so, you know, you just fight, you hold on to things and you have these regrets because the human mind just takes you there. And I just felt 
so bad that I didn't text him back and be like, yeah, I'll pick you up, love you. Like I just, I just ignored it. And so I think for him to sort of acknowledge that and that it was okay. Um, he's referencing to uh, dragonflies, which is a symbol that's coming through as far as an indication or a sign that people would have seen and said, oh, I feel like it might be him. Check and see who would as affiliate the dragonfly connection with this individual. My son. There's a feeling of that's me, that's me, that's me. So please know that. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> so that's important. We were swimming in the pool one day and there was a dragonfly hovering around us, hovering around us. And my son said, it's Uncle Adam. Mm -hmm. And it only happened once, right. but it was significant enough, obviously, that I remembered. And then so when you just said that, it was uh -huh. uh, pretty awesome. Oh, that's awesome. This is his way of saying, your son's right. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Bo knows. I love it. He's more of a dragonfly than butterfly. Yeah, exactly. Adam would be more of a dragonfly. Yeah. It's way exactly. cooler. Yeah. But I think more than anything, it just feeling that Adam is still Adam, and he's still that sort of playful, funny, like boisterous guy um, makes me happy that he still is who he is wherever he is. I feel like I really got to spend some time with my brother, you know, it was great. Going to this, you know, I had no idea who I was gonna be reading or what was going to happen, but when I sat down, I just felt like for you, I was gonna be focusing on the past and for you, I was gonna be focusing on the future. And yeah. I think it shows that, you know, the people that I meet with, I believe hear what they're meant to hear at the time that we meet. And I think for some people, that's a need for closure. For others, that's validation that they're on the right track. But I think that, you know, it all has value and I'm just so glad I got to live it today. So thank you guys. Thank, thank you. you so much. Absolutely. This is really great. We've been bonded before, but yeah. I mean, we are definitely bonded yeah. after this reading. Yeah. And you know, it's it's great because now I mean, we have so many stories. To, I can't wait to get home and like tell my husband and like yeah. tell your husband like what we just experienced. I'm glad yeah. there's people like Tyler that you know give us hope and you know encourage us and and are able to you know speak to the loved ones. I just feel like really peaceful and tired. I think it's just a lot emotionally and mentally to <laughs> concentrate and think about and. Uh, I'm just, I feel really happy. Uh, nice. That was awesome. How do you feel? I love it. <laughs>